Presenting Design of a Roller-Based Dexterous Hand for Object Grasping and Within Hand Manipulation For the past century, researchers developed a great amount of robot hands, but only a fraction of these hands have the capacity to perform within hand manipulation. The Stanford JPL hand and the Utah MIT hand are among the earliest robot hands possessing within hand manipulation capabilities. Because the human hand possesses the dexterity to perform within hand manipulation, there have been lots of attempts to replicate this ability by replicating its structure. While mechanically capable, these highly actuated hands still need to gait in order to perform in hand manipulation. On the other hand, researchers have also explored using conveyor surfaces or active surfaces that allow the graspers to manipulate the objects without substantial modification of the grasp pose. In most of these embodiments, however, the conveyor orientations are fixed, limiting object motion availability. Inspired by previous work that uses active surfaces for in-hand manipulation, in this work, we develop the grasper with articulated active rollers at the fingertips, which provide steerable active surfaces. The grasper assembly consists of three kinematically similar fingers, each consisting of three actuated degree of freedom. The proximal joint is a revolute joint directly driven by Robotis Dynamics or Actuator. The intermediate joint is orthogonal to the proximal joint and is based on a parallelogram mechanism with the input and ground links anchored on the central line of a parallelogram. The intermediate joint controls the orientation of the fingertip roller and is actuated by a micro digital servo motor. Neoprene strips are adhered to the faces of the two vertical links of the parallelogram mechanism so that they may be used as secondary grasping surfaces. The fingertip roller is actuated by a micro DC gear motor equipped with a quadrature encoder and is capable of continuous rotation. The roller is fitted with a stack of square cross section neoprene O rings to provide a high friction surface for grasping and manipulation. Finger 1 and 2 are arranged symmetrically and have parallel proximal joint axis. The parallelogram mechanisms of these two fingers are assembled in a mirrored fashion. Finger 3 is assembled identical to finger 1, and it is placed such that its proximal joint axis is orthogonal to the ones of finger 1 and 2. And this axis is offset from the shared midplane of finger 1 and 2. It is placed such that when finger 3's roller is oriented vertically, the axis of the roller lies on the symmetry plane of finger 1 and 2. Roller pivoting is constrained between 0 and 90 degrees for each finger. The complete grasper weighs 800 grams, and each finger can provide 20 newtons of normal force at the roller center. To better understand the manipulation capabilities of the grasper, we present a kinematic analysis in the simplified case of six stop spatial manipulation of a spherical object in contact with the rollers. Controlling object motion relies on controlling the velocity vector applied at each contact point, which requires carefully steering the rollers. For simplicity, we constrain each roller to vertical or horizontal position, denoted by V or H, or simply unused, denoted by cross. This results in 8 possible 3-finger sphere manipulation configurations and 12 possible 2-finger ones. Considering the symmetrical combinations to be the same, this leaves 6 3-finger configurations and 7 2-finger ones. Of the 13 combinations, 5 were deemed particularly useful for their versatility and ease of use. In addition, there exists a useful 2-finger manipulation where finger 1 and 2 pivot in sync between H and V denoted as P for pivoting, as it provides pure X-rotation and is suitable for switching manipulation configurations. In each configuration, the grasper is able to achieve object manipulation in certain directions. While two-finger cases locally cover all degrees of freedom, three-finger manipulation is required for unrestricted X-rotation and better stability. As some motions are coupled, certain pure motions are not instantaneously achievable but may be replicated using a succession of coupled motions. This is due to the non-holonomic nature of the grasper, much like a car indirectly achieves a lateral translation by moving forward and reverse while adjusting steering during parallel parking. 
Here is a summary of the frames, points, and the kinematic variables we defined to conduct our 3D analysis. For this analysis, we consider a manipulation of a sphere of center D and radius, capitalized R, which yields a closed and solvable system given by contact between the sphere and the rollers, position of the rollers, which can be computed by forward kinematics and homogeneous transformation matrices, and no slip condition between each roller and the sphere. As an example, by numerically solving the previous equations with MATLAB, we were able to continuously rotate the ball around horizontal axis using a stable grasp. Although this example involves vertical translation because of non-holonomic motion, we were able to achieve a pure axe rotation for the sphere by going through a series of motions. The two-finger manipulation can be regarded as a simplified planar problem. The forward and inverse kinematics of the planar problem can be formulated with the position of the sphere Joint angle inverse kinematics carried out using the law of cosines, as well as adding the no slip condition. By solving these equations, we manage to independently control the three degree of freedom planar motion of the ball, namely the translation in x, the translation in z, and the rotation in y. In addition to spherical objects, we also explored manipulation of non spherical objects by combining motions in different roller configurations. Furthermore, the grasper is able to manipulate objects of extreme aspect ratios, such as a piece of paper. One of the major benefits of the roller grasper is that it simplifies the control by avoiding gating when the manipulation requires continuous rotation, for example, turning a bottle cap. Lastly, the fact that the rollers have most of the surface areas exposed opens up additional manipulation possibilities. For example, manipulating concave objects from the inside. In addition to perform in-hand manipulation tasks, the presence of actively driven rolling fingertips offers benefits for grasping objects of different sizes, shapes, and properties. Several of the grasping techniques involve operating the rollers in a counter-rotating manner such that the grasp object is drawn into the grasper. This allows objects, no matter hard or soft, to be picked up while reducing the need for external motions provided by a robot arm. Lastly, the secondary surfaces located on the vertical links of the parallelograms can also be used for grasping objects. There exists a few limitations for the system. Firstly, the system is non-holonomic, as a grasp object cannot be moved in an arbitrary direction instantaneously. The object may need to go through a series of motions before a certain pose can be achieved. Secondly, the object might slip when there is not enough contact area or contact points with the rollers, causing inaccuracy in the manipulation. This can happen for objects with sharp edges or inherently unstable grasp configurations. Lastly, although each finger has a 3 degree of freedom, two of them are dedicated to controlling the roller motions, and only one controls general finger pose. While the grasper performs well in pinch grasp, it makes conforming to an object's shape difficult. Therefore, power grasp is not possible, except for a small subset of objects. In summary, many robot hands have been developed with a wide range of complexity and capability through analysis and application. Our work reinforces how active surfaces can help achieve more capability with less complexity. We have demonstrated a promising novel design, enabling in-hand manipulation with a simpler actuation and without the need for finger gating. It is capable of controlled manipulation grasping of a wide range of object shapes, sizes, and aspect ratios. Future work includes developing various control schemes for manipulation, analysis of the roller grasper workspace and dynamics, and redesign of the finger and roller mechanism. Some of these are addressed in our next project, Roller Grasper V2.